21 May 2022. Make sure to go to my website www.susanmeeling.com also known as lady www.ladydorybell.com subscribe to my official youtube channel and like my official youtube videos as well as if you're going to leave a comment make sure to have etiquette and respect so what if is going to be this particular lecture for this particular official youtube video so what if what if there were a situation which the various levels throughout the United States of America had multiple situations in a similar area despite the factors of? What if? And what if at a certain point in time, a group of individuals all sought to join the army branch at one particular point in time and what if there were certain similarities to the background not necessarily the experiences in a combined totality the what if so what if in this particular reference what if a group that would be a battalion or a basic training unit. What if there were a, enough individuals to put in this particular basic training unit that the biological parents and or a sibling or a few all had certain similar traits. The individuals who had signed the dotted line and gone into basic training, the what if, there had been multiple situations where in comparison to making the correct choice, what if? So I'm gonna give the examples as to when I was in second grade in the 1990s or late 1980s, the situations of having a nightmare and telling people what if there were others who in certain similar aspects had maybe they had a vision maybe they had a nightmare maybe they had a dream maybe they had something that occurred and in comparison to what if there were certain religious backgrounds and certain similar traits throughout so in my particular situation I had a nightmare in second grade. It had already been known for years by that point that I could see various individuals, various areas in the tri-state area knew of me and or met with me regarding that. However, my biological mother, biological father had my biological sister and without the sight, without any viewpoint of and so you know being the original baby Jesus Christ and the individual who had been Methodist as far as the garage the way they had set up the nativity scene back in the 1980s again you must remember my biological mother was a part of the SCA and TRF for those who would understand that. So, being the original baby Jesus Christ. Anybody who knows whatever SCA is, I don't believe that South Carolina Association. I could be incorrect, though that could be an actual thing. <laughs> Nonetheless, I have a feeling it probably doesn't have to do that with that since I learned that TRF stands for Texas Renaissance Festival. And my biological mother and biological father with my biological sister moved to the state of Texas in the year 2003 after I had woken up from my coma after my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000 when I was in basic training. So for a large amount of time it was known and seen by quite a few people throughout the state of New Jersey 
as well as New York State and Pennsylvania State, the differences regarding myself compared to my biological sister. You wouldn't be capable necessarily to find them officially through the normal methods such as yearbooks or congregation versions of phone books with the pictures. You would have to actually know people that were in the area during the time frame and be capable to pinpoint those factors in comparison. Now in the year of 2022, it's, it's fairly simple to pinpoint that much easier in quite a few capacities. So in fifth grade, um, which was after the situation regarding the board meeting where my biological mother and biological father were insulted that I had the nerve to stand up in regards of General George Washington's declaration in reference to Old Tenet Presbyterian Church. And because I had believed and had up to that point in time been made fun of, because how dare I walk weirdly over the center aisle in comparison. And all these other factors because of the occurrences. And I was told that it was an old wives tale in that particular reference. However, when the basement was put in, how dare I have the nerve to say, why don't you just leave it and not mess with it? Because anybody who knows what SCA and TRF would be, you know, my biological mother is part of that. So I had the nerve to take a stand in regards of what was correct. And that was around the time of third, grade, maybe fourth grade, when the combined factors were into that particular situation regarding Pastor William Tennant and that. And then there were the factors of all these occurrences that started happening more often in the grounds of Old Tennant Presbyterian Church, where sightings were occurring, not in reference to UFOs or anything like that, though there were, as I've learned more recently, there were quite a few guys with the black suits and the black ties and the white shirts. And sometimes they have fedoras. In comparison to the rest of the majority of the congregation, usually they had the stereotypical 1980s, 1990s versions of suits. And usually, in reference to the males, the button-down shirts were not ever really white. They were usually a lighter color of a pastel shade, or it was a dark color, or anything except white. Just for clarification. In comparison to these guys who would show up in these black suits with black ties and black shoes, with a white button-down shirt and a fedora. And usually when they showed up, it depended on the situation, but it was more heavy in regards to the location after the basement was put in. So there were plenty of times I met with those guys, mainly after certain situations regarding the forest area behind the property in New Jersey. However, there were other situations such as during camp when <laughs> I would go swimming in the Atlantic area of the ocean. There are a few situations regarding that a few times. Um, I wrote about one or a few times in um, my three volume book series, The Adventures of Susan B. Ling's Scuba Diver Extraordinaire. If you go to my website, www.susanmeeling.com, gives you one example of one time. And so, you know, <laughs> in that particular reference, I'm gonna guesstimate they have different uh, classifications regarding those situations. Nonetheless, that's well before 2009, obviously. That's in the 1980s and 1990s. 
regarding the oceanic aspects. However, in 2009, I earned 26 scuba diving certifications. So, been around these guys a few times. I haven't really had any issues with them. Hopefully it remains that way. I haven't ever made them angry. I knew better. <laughs> they just seem like, you know, guys you wouldn't want to make angry. It's just, it's pretty simple. And I was growing up in New Jersey, so I'm just throwing that out there. <laughs> and that's just kind of, it is what it is. And then there's New York City. Yeah, yeah, in the 1980s and 1990s, just saying. Those guys definitely seemed not to be the ones to anger. That's kind of, <laughs> despite everything else going on in the tri-state area in the 1980s and 1990s, my arithmetic in that particular equation, don't upset those guys. Or if you are going to upset them, upset them with the truth. So that way they know the truth. That's the only way you're allowed to upset those guys. That was my math. <laughs> because then by technicality, they're not really upset, upset. They are upset, but they're not upset. <laughs> and I was growing up, so those who have met Mike, yeah, let's, let, I, I mean, you know, for this lecture, be honest on that, so. <laughs> let's see, at some point in time, Mike is gonna get older. I'm not gonna have to worry about that after a certain point in time. These guys, on the other hand, <sighs> one, two, three, I got that math. <laughs> that was that simple. <laughs> they could show up out of nowhere <laughs> and have these random cars that didn't make any sense how they had some of these cars. Yeah, sure, okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's my arithmetic. Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> I had gotten in trouble because how dare I take a stand on what was correct. And then I was proven accurate as to that uh, <laughs> basement situation. And so then in fifth grade, I had mono Epstein Barr bronchitis, Lyme's disease, and the flu all at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I was uh, kept at the house instead, even though I had gotten immunizations since I was a infant, and even though I was born in an actual hospital through a C-section, by the way, my biological mother and biological father hypothetically tried to claim the religious aspects, even though I was delivered through a C-section. I don't know, it, I could be incorrect. I'm fairly certain when you're born through a C-section, you probably um, cannot have parents who claim a religious aspect for medical care. Hypothetically, that might be a smidgen hypocritical and be a massively huge red flag to DIFIS or in other areas it's known as Child Protective Services. So, you know, <clears throat> the, doc, the pediatrician that I had in New Jersey, I can't remember his name, um, but he was, he was kind. I remember he usually, he had kind of salt and pepperish hair. He was, he was older than I, of course. And um, he was lighter complexion. And so there's that. And he was extremely enraged with my biological mother for not taking me to the emergency room in fifth grade. He was absolutely infuriated. He argued with her repeatedly and um, the nurses and, and the entire staff at that particular pediatrician's office pretty much after that did not like Anna or Mike or Patricia at all. So instead of being hospitalized as I should have been, 
because of the health care for that. And I would have been back in school much quicker instead of being out of school from September through to basically April. Um, so September 1992 through April of 1993, if, if, if <laughs> my biological parents actually had cared, obviously, I would have been in a hospital instead. So since that is as it is, what if? So fast forward, I was invited to attend Marine and Science Technology School with the Navy attachment. Took the tests and the, or the placement tests, or ASVAB equivalent, took the essay portions of those tests and had the three interviews. And then, and that was in 1996, and in 1998, was moved to Illinois after a whole bunch of times where some guys had shown up to the house. They were not in the black suits. Usually, uh, what from one time that I can remember, this group of guys had white pants, but they didn't have stripes. And they had uh, trench coats-ish that came to about here that were dark blue. And, uh, and they, they had a heavy disagreement with Mike and Anna. And then shortly thereafter, moved to Illinois. In comparison, and so instead of going to Marine and Science Technology School with the Navy attachment, I had attended St. John Vianney High School. So anybody who knows the Christian history or Judeo-Christian history, you have an idea. If you don't know Judeo-Christian history, maybe you've heard of the Holy Roman Catholic Church. And hypothetically, some people could know about some little skirmishes, if you want to use that as a politically correct terminology, that the Holy Roman Catholic Church may have had a different viewpoint than certain other individuals. By a lot, they kind of have throughout a few, a few weeks here and there just a few weeks. And so in, in the summer of 1996, because my biological mother thought all churches were the same, which anybody who knows, knows otherwise. So I was sent to Baptist Camp Lebanon because how different is a Baptist to a Presbyterian? Oh, by the way, I was baptized Methodist before be baptized Presbyterian. Okay, so let's, you know, that, remember, SCA and TRF, okay? And I made a joke since I was a child in reference to certain religious issues that my biological mother had by a lot. And so, not the only one in my marriage, but you know, in that capacity, yeah. And so, her mom became a nun after a while. And so uh, she, she went to seminary college, which is an irony for that name. Anyway, <laughs> she, um, she didn't see any difference between Baptist and Presbyterian whatsoever. So when it came to the choice of my preference to, to go to Marine and Science Technology School with the Navy attachment, you'd think that that would be a way to bond when you really think about it, because she worked in Prudential doing information technology. You'd think that she would have actually been intelligent in that capacity, but okay, now that's fine. You know, it's literally in the name, but you know, that's, that, that is as it is. That's, that's, so, you know. St. John Vianney High School in comparison because Presbyterians don't have saints at all. There's no sainthood in the Presbyterian Church. It's a thing. Only in the Catholic faith is there sainthood because it's the facts. Huge difference. There's a few, there's a few different denominations 
between the time frame of the formation of the Holy Roman Catholic Church, before you get to Protestant, there's this guy, Calvin. Uh, there's another guy, Luther. There's a few other guys <laughs> who have a smidgen of a background here and there. And so, you know, the, the Holy Roman Catholic Church over the years, a couple of skirmishes here and there, just a few here and there. And so in comparison to Old Tenet Presbyterian Church and all these other factors, my biological mother knows that I'm going through confirmation class. And instead of going to Marine and Science Technology School with the Navy attachment, I go to St. John Vianney High School because what drama could that stir up? I mean, you know, whoever would know about the schooling in comparison to Sunday school, mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't know. I've heard of CCD. I have heard of that. I don't actually know what it is. However, you know, it's just New Jersey in the 1990s, by the way, just as a reminder. And so I <laughs> was sent from Marlboro Middle School and Marlboro High School briefly instead of to Marine and Science Technology School, to St. John Vianney High School. And so I'm gonna give, a, I'm gonna give you two last names in the 1990s to think about regarding the Holy Roman Catholic Church. <clears throat> Farinella and Palazzolo. However, anybody, because I've been told by so many people that they know how New Jerseyans are. I don't personally know. However, when I was in Illinois and people tried to claim certain things about me, <coughs> I made sure, <coughs> I made sure <coughs> to tell them, do not say that I'm in the mafia. Don't do that. No, you, no, 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 no. No, 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 I'm not saying all Italians are in that. However, I, I have a very small amount of Italian in my background. So you, you can tell whatever Italians you know that I know better. You make sure, and then the irony people in Illinois actually were like, yeah, we would. We'll totally tell some Italians that you don't claim to be in the mafia. Yeah, you go do that. <laughs> Make sure when you do that, you let them know that I don't have a large percentage of Italian in my background, okay? Yeah, we'll do that. Totally do that. Okay, good for you. <laughs> I actually dealt with this. So, you know. <clears throat> but I went to St. John Miami High School, parochial Catholic high school. Yes, I did. As a Presbyterian, baptized as a Methodist, and a Presbyterian, to that, in the 1990s. So anybody who knows any, you know, more recent history in comparison to, you know, those, those skirmishes here and there, <laughs> of course I'm being sarcastic, because, you know, what skirmishes could there be? <laughs> I mean, seriously, what type of crusade could there have been in regards of just a skirmish? Just a couple of skirmishes here and there. You know, a, a, a few tips, okay, if you will? <laughs> Maybe a few, a few times there were a, a couple of disagreements. Mm hmm yes, one or two, or, you know, days, you know, maybe, sarcasm here, but maybe somebody somewhere has heard about this. Maybe there's a book or two somewhere that somebody could read, and maybe, maybe there's a few details here and there about the possibilities of certain, you know, <laughs> you know, there was, you know, just something here and there, just, you know, just something. <laughs>
some sort of issue, you know, something. And so my biological mother, one of her sisters went to whatever schools, when she had her first two children, she was a Southern Baptist. When she remarried, she was a Catholic. Okay, so you know, whatever religious stuff there. Uh, another sister to my biological mother had gone to whatever schools, became a hippie during the 1960s and 1970s, then had become a pagan, but because, you know, it's not Samhain, it's Salwin. <clears throat> and then, <clears throat> then there's a brother who, warlock that turned Christian over time, and the other one, a non-denominational Christian. Then there's my biological father's side of the family, and he's first generation Chinese. And my buck gong and my buck poo, you know, my buck gong being Cantonese, my buck poo half Cantonese, half Mandarin. So, you know, there's a few nature ish, based ish sort of backgrounds in that regard. And then my biological father's aunt, who is my cousin or second cousin Jade's mom, married an African American. And so then there's that version of Christianity, which I don't know what it's called at all. I know that they wore purple robes with gold um, sashes. Remember that. So uh, for, at the, for one particular qu choral event. And so that's, that's my childhood. <laughs> so what if, what if the army branch got a group of people together that had certain weirdnesses like that, where the proof as to what actually would be best should have been made as far as the correct choices, though because of other social aspects to the difference. So I have discussed in person, face to face in person, as well as put in writing and prior official YouTube videos of mine. Make sure to subscribe to my official YouTube channel and like and share my official YouTube video links, as well as if you're going to leave a comment, make sure to have etiquette and respect. So, you know, um, I went into basic training and 17 years old, I had to actually fight to be capable to go in. And so when I went, within the first 24 to 48 hours, I had defended a female to be capable to keep her braids because there weren't extensions. And the way the end of the tips were completed, there's a specific difference between if you have extensions put in compared to if it's your natural hair, as obviously African Americans would know far better than I, obviously, <laughs> that's common sense. But I mean, you know, and so uh, I can I can acknowledge that I'm just saying. Um, and so <laughs> it's a huge difference between the way the end of the tips are for those particular braids. If I remember correctly, they were about um, just under half an inch thick for those types of braids, for those who understand. I don't know if there's a specific term, though she had the, the, that as far as her hair. And then it was as the way basic training went. I completed the CCC course the first go round. I completed the COC course. The first go round, I had maxed out my push ups, I maxed out my sit ups. My mile run time was around the what would be for an 18 year old male, biological female, though it was as it was. There was a point before we actually did our run around the, the track 
um, the drill sergeants had asked if anybody had been in state for track and field. And one particular female rose her hand and she was all, yes, I was, yes, 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 went on and all that sort of stuff. And whatever placement was is whatever placement was. I was in the top 10 or well, top 20 of the, I think it might've been 25, but whatever, as far as uh, times and the, as the only female in the area for my run time. And so in that reference, I had classes along with everybody else in my basic training. And so there were a lot of discussions that were, some were philosophical, such as what would your viewpoint be in regards of if a dependent, in reference to a spouse having done certain things, what would your standpoint be? Because Drill Sergeant Parsley had brought up that there were dependent spouses that had gotten in trouble at the PX and PXtra and having taken items from there and then the sponsor in my case or in regards of drill sergeant parsley having brought up saying that you know the sponsor dealt with certain things because of and i had given my opinion when called upon and it was well if the dependent makes a choice the dependent is who should actually be punished in comparison to the sponsor because unless the sponsor specifically would have you and you'd have to get the details depending on the situation to ensure the clarifications as to the details. And so if it's just something such as a purse in that reference, well then that's the dependent to deal with. If it's something else, it just depends, pun intended, on the situation. So then there were but there was the time that went between various classes and so on and so forth, marches. You know, uh, I wasn't, I don't remember what the term is, but I was on the left side of the road march and the, the flag bearer was on the right side in regards of the road march. And the male was over six feet tall. I'm only five foot four and he tried to set the pace, which I had taken a stand against, and I actually started arguing with him during that particular road march. And while we were road marching, I was literally yelling over across the area that a, a Humvee or two would be capable to drive through. I yelled across, and yelled at him, t telling him to slow down because he was not the one to set the pace. And we went back and forth, and uh, I think it was Drill Sergeant Parsley or Drill Sergeant Gonzalez who had run up to find out what was going on because during a road march, you're just supposed to road march. And so drill, the Drill Sergeant asked the male first what occurred, and. He had explained that he thought he had the right to set the pace. And then I was asked, and I had informed the drill sergeant, I was setting the pace. That individual tried to get the pace to move at a different spot because he was carrying the flag and he didn't have the right to do so. And so while road marching for the past, I think it was, I think we had road marched two or three clicks by that point where I was arguing with this guy while, you know, having the ruck on my back and all that stuff for the road march, the drill sergeant had asked me, but it's not really, I was voluntold to um, stand at parade rest, as, as people understand. That guy was smoked while I held the American flag, and then afterwards, um, I was sent to the rear to go and bring everybody up to the area because the drill sergeant had said that was what was needed. I'm sure there's some metaphors in that particular reference. So ran with my rock all the way to the rear after that guy was smoked. It's a military term, so push-ups and sit-ups for the understanding. 
and then I had handed the American flag back and ran back to the rear area and brought everybody up to speed to wherever we were road marching to at the time. So shortly after that was the, I think it's CQ office area where the situation is a little bit of a storm. Uh, hi. <laughs> suppose I can joke. And so <clears throat> in the office area, a female had shown up with a picnic basket and was going to surprise the drill sergeant who was from Alpha uh, Company. And I had asked to see her identification card. She showed me the identification card and I allowed her to go in the back. And then there was a situation where I went to call 911 and the phone was ripped out of the wall. And so then uh, from that point in time onward until just before breakfast chow, I dealt with being smoked or push-ups and sit-ups and all that sort of stuff until um, time to get ready for chow. And my battle buddy at the time, her name was Washington, and it was as it was. So then got ready. And that morning there were uh, yellow pieces of paper and an invitation to <laughs> Palm Sunday. <laughs> and so um, this was after a situation regarding where we got to see what we were told were different types of ammunition because at Fort Sill, Oklahoma, Oklahoma, it's an armory base. And so I had been the only person who had pointed out the different disguises in reference to certain situations, as well as the, um, the way the landscape was. So there were different areas that had you could tell freshly sodded grass in comparison to the rest of the grass. And so uh, that situation was the day before the identification card situation and that. And so that following day at Chow was the yellow piece of paper with the folded palm leaf in the shape of a cross and the Palm Sunday services available. And so I went to that particular church service in comparison because of the way certain things I noticed as to how that actually went because people who went to church at that time had seemed to try to get out of the barracks cleanup. They had to deal with KDP afterwards though, or KP, I shouldn't say irony of irony, uh, KP afterwards when they tried to uh, get out of actual work, which was just the barracks work, and that was it, comparison. But that particular day, it seemed important for me to go to church. And ironically, they actually had communion that particular day, though it was as it was, it was Palm Sunday. And so that was that, and then that night was my head injury. And so, at a point in time, after that same drill sergeant had come up to the third floor, and, uh, it's just befitting <laughs> as far as, and uh, for a length of time, dealt with being smoked and all that, doing the push-ups, uh, stand, you know, down up, all that sort of stuff, um, the different physical aspects, picking cherries, military press, that sort of stuff. After, at a point in time, because of who was in a bay directly across the walkway from where my bunk was, ironically, the same female who I had um, defended her hair regarding the UCMJ. So the wall clock, that was a hands clock, I had counted 45 minutes from a certain point in time. And so dealt with that and 
Then the drill sergeant asked why I wouldn't break, why I wouldn't crack. And I asked the drill sergeant as a 17 year old, only out of New Jersey for less than two years. I asked if I had permission to speak freely and <laughs> The drill sergeant said, fine, go ahead. I did not understand what that meant <laughs> because I actually thought I had that. And so I informed him, but it was the truth. That I had been called a bitch, a whore, a slut, and a cunt since I was a child. My biological mother let me know that she had repeatedly made attempts to abort and she was you know herself i'm the first born to a first generation chinese male and even though in the later part of his childhood he grew up in foster care and orphanages but i'm still a first generation chinese female or I'm the first born to a first generation Chinese male as a female. And so drill sergeant got really mad and there were words back and forth. And one of the things just before my head injury was, do you think that you could prove that? And I mean, this guy was probably about six foot two and had darker complexion and shaved head as, you know, that's the army. It got in my face with the, the round brown that touched my hair. And yes, Joe Sergeant, I don't believe that I'd have to actually do anything to prove it to you. They'll prove it to you on their own. And so that's when he picked me up and yelled some more and then shook me and then threw me into the middle part of the bunk. And I remember at some point looking upward and seeing a metal rail. I don't remember seeing a mattress, but I do remember seeing a square long <laughs> rail. Um, and then I remember being on a moving, rolling bed with metal nearby. And when I looked over, I remember seeing a spotted kind of floor. I do remember before then, I was sitting on the floor in a master sergeant's office, throwing up into a trash can, while one of the females from basic training with the last name of Nagoyne had pushed my hair out of my face as I was throwing up because I got my hair cut in solidarity because of the other female who had her braids that she had started unbraiding um, because of the situation. And then I remember um, scaring some of the medical professionals. I remember that. Yeah, so I remember there was a point in time I was laying on something. <laughs> I'm going to guesstimate it was a bed or like a bed-like structure. <laughs> I remember there was a white sheet and then I remember sitting up and they, they freaked out. <laughs> I don't know what freaked them out so badly, but they did. They freaked out. <laughs> there was a little bit of screaming, which was really loud, <clears throat> especially with all of the metal around the area. It was whew, loud when they screamed. <laughs> I don't know what they were scared of, but... <laughs> wasn't very professional, I can say that. <laughs> I 
I can make that joke now, sarcastically ish. So, <laughs> so that's 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 that. So the what if, what if in that reference, what if? Because afterwards, after being in medical hold unit, and then off of the Fort Sam Houston, not in ref, not just in reference to the rave in Brackenridge, but in regards of. <laughs> the situation as to <laughs> the apartment complex and that. Um, I can make the reference regarding the what if. So what if in regards of the situations after having been taken off of the military installation and the way it was informed regarding how the justice of the peace situation occurred and the way my biological mother and biological father and biological sister responded in comparison because they they felt they, they let their feelings be known that they felt that they missed out on the justice of the peace situation and they were angry because I didn't go through with the Crystal Lake South graduation walk. And so the what if aspect going to the equivalent of CPS and DIFUS because of in fifth grade, but well before that, because there were other situations in Asher Holmes Elementary School that that was known. And so what if? So for example, in fifth grade, when the nurse had actually called my biological mother on the phone, my biological mother, having known that I, with anybody who's been around someone who has bronchitis, I was coughing, I couldn't even breathe because of how much I was coughing. And instead of what a mom would actually do that actually cared, um, she had asked the nurse to just, you know, have me stay in the nurse's office instead because, you know, she had her work to do in comparison and it would have been an inconvenience to actually stop working to take care of me in the correct capacities. So the nurse was a smidgen upset by a lot and so, but that wasn't the first time, realistically, in that school. The first time was actually in first grade. Um, not to the level of mono Epstein Barr bronchitis, Lyme's disease, and the flu all at the same time, just other situations. So the school nurse had dealt with a few things. So did my teachers throughout the years. And so, you know, it wasn't like there was only one DIFUS report against Mike and Anna. There were multiple DIFUS reports throughout from the time frame of kindergarten upward, as far as I was concerned. But my biological mother and my biological father tried to blame me for what other people noticed in comparison to them taking responsibility and accountability for their choices. So, as time went onward in my life, and in reference to the what if regarding that drill sergeant, because I had spoken with drill sergeant personally in regards of one of the projection screen situations, among a few other factors as to what I had dealt with in reference of my childhood and my teenage years. And everybody in my basic training knew that I had fought to get away from my biological mother and biological father and biological sister because of my nightmare that I had in regards of what I knew I could do to assist. And while some people weren't as open in reference to beliefs as to nightmares or visions or dreams, I had explained a few different situations in my basic training. And so the what if? Well, anybody in the state of Illinois in the year of 1998 through 2003 would know what my biological mother 
and or my biological father and or my biological sister had to say about me. Doesn't necessarily only translate into the specific, more well-known aspects such as yearbooks and those capacities, it'd be multiple areas as to different situations where it wouldn't be that same sort of factor. Then you have New Jersey and the tri-state area and those references. And then in 2003, you have the state of Texas, as far as that's concerned. And while I made attempts, just as similarly in regards of New Jersey and New York and Pennsylvania and Illinois and the Army, in the state of Texas, I made attempts to actually go into those details before how my son and I wound up in Washington State and I just put that all in writing regarding my first two books. If you go to my website www.susanmealing.com, finding a silver lining and finding the silver lining would be the books that would be the reference point. So I grew up with that. And a bunch of people in the state of Texas repeated words that my biological mother and or my biological father and or my biological sister and or my ex-in-laws would say. During the time frame of 2003 through on and off through 2008. And so the San Antonio pagan community situation as far as that's concerned and you know, the Red Hat Society situation as far as that was concerned in 2012. And in 2012, here's the what if. Shortly before that Red Hat situation, or Red Hat Society, um, my biological mother had her two sisters, Edie and Chris, show up with Grandma Gabbett. And Chris, in the kitchen, which obviously this is after my biological sister's abomination of a whore wedding. As far as that's concerned, I've already gone over those details. Uh, my biological mother was in the kitchen with my biological mother's sister, Chris, who looked at me and then looked at Anna, my biological mother, and said, you know, Anna, I wonder what Susan, if anything, had ever done in regards of deserving this karmically. And I got infuriated because it's my daughter and my son and I who were dealing with situations and we were in the kitchen. And my biological mother said, oh, I just don't know. What would ever be that Susan actually did to deserve that? Now, if in that hypothetical, regarding my childhood, you do have viewpoints to take in consideration. If you want to claim that that is a good mom, I don't know why you would ever consider that, referencing Anna, because of whatever proof would be capable to be found. And so I was infuriated. I went out to the garage, spoke with Mike, so infuriated at that point in time. And Mike was just, well, you know how Chris is. No, I don't, because I had a head injury. I don't really remember many experiences with her. And so Mike had tried to claim certain things and it was, no, see if you would just tell me the truth instead. If you would just tell me the truth. And my biological father was as he was. And so instead of just telling me the truth, well, we didn't speak very long after that. It was the third time by that point. And so that would be why it was the third time. So after 2018 and 2019, it was past the number three in regards of my biological mother, biological father, and biological sister. So anything would be a mandatory situation where they would have had to follow my rules in comparison 
to anything else because I was done when it came to that. And so what if in that reference, because this is the year of 2022 and not having remembered certain factors until, well, what if the army was informed of that? I mean, you know, I just went to a public school in New Jersey in the 1980s and 1990s for elementary school. And so what records? And then I only went to a public middle school and what records. And then I only was invited to attend Marine and Science Technology School with the Navy attachment. What records would it take to receive an invitation? On top of the records regarding my ASVAB and my essays and my interview. What records? I mean, that's just an extremely democratic state especially in the 1980s and 1990s. So then what records? In regards of St. John Manny High School, yes, but then you have Illinois, Crystal Lake South. What records? As far as all of those facts. And so by the time of in the army, which the recruiter station knew about what was going on, and if any aspects of, because, well, my biological mother and biological father and biological sister probably wouldn't have thought about that. As to the specific individuals, as to which individuals, because of course, similarly, my paperwork is not gonna be the only individual who was involved with me getting into the army at all. Most likely, they wouldn't even put in the actual individual recruiter that I had, most likely, if this what if situation were to be. Especially with the fact that by the time of 1999, when speaking with the army recruiter, I had an email address that was only a little over a year old. And that was, yeah nothing else online at all. I was born and raised in New Jersey, the 1980s and 1990s. So, you know, I mean, what would that translate to in any military capacity at all? I mean, that, or law enforcement, I mean, that's kind of, you know, from the 1980s and 1990s, Anna worked at Prudential doing information technology software. I went to Asher Holmes Elementary School. We had a computer lab by the time we were in first grade. Maybe second is when some aspects of other additional portions. So, you know, I didn't have an email address until 1998. And I only used the email to contact the radio station. That was it at that time. So <laughs> what would somebody from whatever type of military stance see in that as a what if, of course, what if? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not the smartest crayon in the toolbox. I'm fairly certain there could be something. <laughs> so, because I played outside more than I ever had online. So I didn't see the reason to do the stuff online when you could speak with people in person, face to face in person. Why, why bother? That's, that's how human beings actually interact. That's how that goes. You can't have a genuine relationship and especially certain capacities as you grow in age, unless it's in person, face to face in person. So, you know, how else would you get to know? Obviously. And so it was my viewpoint as a teenager especially, 
And so I knew that technology stuff was going to go in certain directions, but I also knew that you're not going to be in a relationship with someone in certain capacities without that in person, face to face in person. It's just the facts. And so, in those particular references, what if? So when looking back to reviewing what Chris had said, which is my Aunt Chris on my maternal side of the biological aspects, and Edie having sat there watching with Grandma Gavet as Anna, my biological mother, tried to placate and do the I don't know what she could have ever done. What would karma be as far as that's concerned? Because of course I was, so the interrogation that I dealt with in the year of 2012 after Patrick had left the answering machine tape, that wasn't the first time I've ever dealt with stuff like that from Mike and Anna at all. Anytime my biological sister did sh stuff that I didn't do, but it was her fault, it's nothing new for me. And only after a certain point in time would it finally be believed because, and it, was n it wasn't ever a guarantee as to what length of time, but that was my childhood. I was blamed wrongly for what my biological sister did a minimum of once a month throughout my childhood. And I didn't do anything wrong each and every time. I would acknowledge everything I did wrong and my biological sister inevitably would come out and then be like, oh yeah, like, I totally forgot it to whatever. And then it was as it was. And so I had explained this to people throughout the years. And a bunch of people, oh sure, it's just a sibling rivalry. No, that's not a sibling rivalry at all. That's not a sibling rivalry. I don't care how you try to put it. That is not a sibling rivalry. That is a problem. So Edie and, or Aunt Edie and Grandma Gavit were disgusted. Like I remember looking in from the kitchen to where they were sitting on the couch and Edie and Grandma Gavit just looked at Anna and shook their heads as far as the situation was concerned. And Anna tried to whatever in certain references as Chris was just, well, Anna, and literally, Anna, what is wrong with you? What is it that you can't see in regards to whose karma? What would Susan ever have done that would ever actually constitute what her and her daughter and her son are dealing with? what was ever actually to that level. And Anna, my biological mother, I don't know. Don't ask me. That's what she literally said in the kitchen. And so, this is it is. Because you have this background, this length of time, and whatever proof they're up. So, there's a lot of situations I dealt with throughout the years where I was falsely accused of quite a few situations time and time again. Wrongfully accused is the really big emphasis of because either it was something my biological mother did and or my biological father and or my biological sister. And then you have my ex-in-laws as far as that's concerned and the associated connections. And then you have the abomination of a wedding in 2009 regarding my biological sister and Zach Miller after the situations in my backyard regarding my house in San Antonio in 2003 
I think it was September or October, regarding those three other teenagers that I did not invite onto my property. I didn't invite them at all. And my biological sister legally did not actually have the right to invite them. That's the facts. She had no authority and no right to ever invite them on my property. At all, whatsoever. And so there's those facts because it was my property, my VA home loan, my house. Facts. But what if in the amounts of times? How many people could have said something? How many people could have done something? So what if? What if, in regards of basic training, and that reference of, there's a group? Not the only ones, I'm sure as to having dealt with wrongful accusations. How do you find the truth? How do you actually get the truth? So what if? What if that were a situation where at that point in time, what if? I wouldn't have that official capacity of knowledge. Though, I do remember in 2020 or 2021, there was a male I had met when uh, in the Austin area or Round Rock uh, at a bombshells, that particular um, restaurant. And there was a female that was brought up having been some football player, I think from Colorado, maybe uh, a team member's mom and the way she was treated in comparison to whatever the possibility actually was or could be, I don't know. But I could easily see in regards of how wrongful problems had been as the time frame when I was a child and a teenager and a biological adult. And I wanted to clarify, because I have every right to clarify, that fact, there wasn't ever any allowance that my biological mother or my biological father or my biological sister ever were allowed. I didn't give them that, ever. So while some people might have wished to believe otherwise because of the same aspects that were needless and problematic, what if? Because of the knowledge that technology had been developing as swiftly as it has, especially when you take in consideration the formation of NASA, the satellites in the sky, the utilization of different technological pieces beyond radio comms during different exercises and missions, um, and that's well before cell phones. And then you have the consideration as far as different machinery, telephone lines, so on and so forth in reference to the various computing devices. And then the electrical factors and power. Because you have to monitor the power somehow, even with solar panels, you still have to monitor the input and the output, obviously. It registers somewhere. And my only way to give is a reference point, people who remember in the 1980s, what was it? The skip it or the bop it, whatever it was, is a little thingamabob that you put on your ankle as a bracelet. I didn't understand why anybody wanted to ever do that because it was just one of those, huh? But people back in the 1980s and or 1990s, they would jump, literally, um, to get these little bop it thingamabobs or skip it's. And it was a bracelet that you put around your own ankle. And then you'd sling it around and you'd skip and it would count how many times you could do that. It was the equivalent of a Fitbit now in a different capacity in far less technology though. And so I didn't really like that situation. I did look at it though, because it was very weird to me as a child 
that people would actually want to do that. I thought the, um, I don't remember what it was called. It looked like the, the planet Saturn, though. That's the only thing I can remember. It was highly dangerous, though. <laughs> if you didn't have balance. If you had no balance, it was, it, it, so it was like a big circular ball and then it had a ring around it. And you had to try to stay balanced on this doohickey mabob. And I can't remember what it was called. I actually did pretty, I did pretty good on it. It was dangerous for a lot of other people though. <laughs> I watched a lot of people face plant. Mm -hmm, I saw that. And, um, <laughs> and then there were somehow you could like, if you put your feet a certain way, you could hop around with this doohickey babob. And it was one of those, I don't know about that. <laughs> I'll go swimming in the ocean out to the jetties, you know, past those and to the buoys. But I don't know, that seems dangerous. <laughs> Perspective, I suppose. <laughs> Nonetheless, that's that's kind of kind of the thing. Like I'd watch that, and but there is that when you take in consideration the viewpoint and those references, because what would it be? So in 2004, I had told people about this situation in my backyard, and a bunch of people lost it. They couldn't tolerate it. And it was one of those, what is the problem? You didn't deal with it. And on top of which, they tried using the after effects of my head injury. And it was one of those, and yet I have repeatedly told the truth. At what point in time do you just accept the facts? Realistically, get over your own egos, get over your own arrogances, and accept the fact that this is your pattern of behavior. You haven't ever done anything that was actually beneficial. You've just been this way. And so in this hypothetical that who did not have any right and who had no authority, who was not invited regarding my biological mother, biological father, and biological sister in any capacity of, so if they had made a choice where they didn't have any legal authority or any legal right and they were not invited and so on and so forth, that needs to be cleared out and exonerated in my favor. Because again, over and over again, you have this what if situation. Because you have the additional factors of what I've obviously taken care of. So I didn't invite them and there's no legal authority that they have, especially when it comes to my sponsorship. So if they spoke with my ex-in-laws in especially the reference to David Osteen, who had no authority to get involved whatsoever after already having the blue identification card situation, what if, what if in the infinite wisdom regarding whoever whichever branch or division had decided, well, what if? Because there's my medical records and all these other factors of Grandpa Gavit, Buck Gum, Buck Poo, Nep Station in Chicago, Mast with the Navy attachment, public schools, so on and so forth. And then there's Joe Jose and the World Trade Center Director of Security, World Trade Center Plaza. So what if, what if without my knowledge and only thinking about this in the year of 2022, what if there was a, well, we have NASA, we know whatever amount of time as to how there have been many reports that have slowly been coming outward. So there's the big blue book or the blue book project that more people have learned about. There's the UFO, UAP, and so on and so forth sightings that the Pentagon and the Navy more so have been bringing forward. 
There's additionally the formation of the U.S. Space Force. There's other people who have pictures and videos and posted sightings of these various occurrences. You even have the reference point of the thunder and lightning at the point in time of my official YouTube video. And I have been honest, not only in reference to the year 2004 in my vision quest, also in regards of my scuba diving. In conjunction to Irving in the year 2011, among the situations before then and after then. What if? So while I haven't denied, I also haven't been asked in reference to Irving in 2011, I have detailed a few situations since, but that's 2011 and 2014 when having put it in writing. In comparison to back then when I was in basic training in the year 2000, so my updates in my journal blog, The Ornery PSA, on my website, www.susanmealing.com, you have the capacity, especially from the year of 2019 through this year of 2022, at what point in time do those what-ifs become, well, that happened, and now these are the next steps to take. Because obviously justice has to occur because in the genuine progression forward in betterment in life, that does require the capability to have the clarifications and verifications, but also in reference to actually taking care of situations because of the needs. How are you going to have the situations such as NASA, such as um, Blue Origin, such as SpaceX, and whatever other companies that there are that have been working on various flying objects beyond just airplanes, you know, because obviously there are airplanes that are in the private use, the commercial use, but then there's actual military law enforcement style aspects of how do you actually make sure of these clarifications and verifications, especially in regards of the more advanced usage of technology. Because then you have the situations of certain individuals and their surrounding circumstances. Because if you have to have those clarifications and verifications to be capable to actually progress forward, well, how do you do so? So what if? So in 2019, I had brought forward updates from the starting regarding my journal blog. I had authored a few more books, and that was in the year of 2019 after making genuine attempts to speak with people in person, face-to-face -face in person. I had driven, I had drove from Washington State back to the state of Texas. My son had gone into the army at that point in time and those factors, the situations in reference to my daughter because of making sure, but also making attempts regarding the overall scuba diving community because of, I mean, Anybody in the civilian recreational sector of scuba diving in the state of Texas, maybe they know of a place in Texas that has something like NASA somewhere that could hypothetically have some knowledge base or something, you know, pun intended regarding base. So hypothetically, maybe there's something somewhere that Maybe, just maybe, like a body of water. Which, you know, of course, a body of water nearby something NASA-ish. Maybe, hypothetically, there could be some sort of, I don't know, scuba diving or something. 
So, you know, what could that ever translate to? Because, you know, what if? Common sense. So, what if? And what would the what if be? Because what if the Army and the Air Force and the Coast Guard and the Navy and the Marine Corps, obviously, having had certain situations, not just in regards of biological mother, biological father, and then whatever biological siblings or siblings in general, what if? Less than 3% of the population usually is the overall average to who volunteers. Well, why? What if? Each person chooses to volunteer by their own choice of whatever reasonings they have. Mine was because of a nightmare I had, and I wanted to prevent damages as best as I could, which I succeeded and made that, thankfully. However, I'm not the only one. But what is the clarification and verification of? And especially with the utilization of technology, this lecture aspect of. So what if? What if in those situations? What if in those references? And then who are other people, such as, especially regarding those types, regarding my biological mother, biological father, biological sister, don't ever get along with, don't need any part of, don't want any part of, have only had needless problems because of, why would those people ever have any input in my life in comparison? Those people aren't invited. They're not allowed. There's no rights for them to at all in any capacity. They might feel otherwise, but they know that they don't. So then there's that abomination of a wedding situation regarding my biological sister. What if there was a picture taken? And then, well, who is this? And that karmic reference regarding my Aunt Chris calling Anna out in her and Mike's house in front of Edie and Grandma Gavin. What does that prove to my childhood and my teenage years? My biological adult years? Other than the reasons why those types don't need to cause me any needless problems and need to stay out of every aspect. especially when it comes to ex-in-laws, as far as any choices that were of a free will choice. Others in those capacities, while I could be incorrect, I could be, but if I'm not incorrect, then what? Because I'm willing to discuss, but it has to be in truth. And so that's, that's kind of a big deal in quite a few capacities. And so you've got scuba diving in those situations and more. And because of my own personal preferences of that in-person, face-to-face, in-person, because that's a reality, I made attempts. Well, if you're going to speak with me in genuine truth, with honesty and respect and etiquette, I'm open to discussions. I've always been that way. But that goes on others, as far as if it's worth it to them. That's the thing. So the what if. 
and with the knowledge that on the 6th of June, 2022, there's the merger. As far as T-Mobile and Sprint. Everything will be at warp speed then. So, what if? So I've made the best possible choices to the best of my capabilities, despite every situation. I've dealt with the consequences, I don't deny that, and what the majority of consequences were for speaking the truth up to this particular point in time it's mainly been bad and indifferent regarding what I've dealt with in my opinion in comparison to what would be considered good consequences that I have no idea what that actually is I've seen where others have had good comparison. So that's, that's the reality as to the differences. So the what if factors, what if in these references, it just so happens to be that somebody when maybe at, when I had been in basic training before my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000 and or after I woke up from my coma after my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000 with the subarachnoid hemorrhage in the frontal lobe of my brain that took eight and a half years to fully dissipate from view out of the MRI and CAT scan to go and live in a different sort of capacity because of the facts. And then my scuba diving and earning, or I had earned my 26 scuba diving certifications on my own. Continuing on with other stuff. So what if? What would that translate to? What importance would that be? Especially when you take in consideration space aspects and not just space aspects. Of course, there's the aeronautical factors in regards of the different types of, I'll say airplanes. <laughs> I'll say airplane, that's, that's what I'll say. I'll say airplane in comparison, but in that reference, because you have to be capable to trust who you're with in those references, especially with the technological aspects. If you're about life, if you're about that, you know, progression and stuff, so, you know, there's the facts. But you also have submersibles regarding scuba diving in a different capacity, of course. I've had a few ideas. I'm just gonna leave that at that because of a few viewpoints I created the idea of my underwater travel system. There's a few situations. It's not just a pretty, you know, I am a smidgen about security. <laughs> and um, have a few experiences far as uh, scuba diving, well before scuba diving though. And so I have, I have a few ideas here and there. 
to keep the land above sea level secure. So you guys have a good day. Make sure to like my official YouTube video, share my official YouTube video link, subscribe to my official YouTube channel, and go to my website, www.susanmeeling.com, also the same as www.ladydorybell.com. You guys have a good day. Today is the 21st of May, 2022.